All right, so we're going to start by making a brand new squad, kind of like a squad builder type thing, where we talk about different players in different positions for different tactics, different play styles. I'm going to be using a 4-2-1-3, probably the most popular formation at the moment with the most popular tactic. Now, this is... This could change, obviously, with the new update, but I think that 90% of this information in this video is going to stay until we get eFootball 25. Couple of buffs, couple of nerfs, obviously that's going to happen with the passing, the speed, the defense I think will be toned down with the new update, but let's see. But the big decision you need to make in goals, if you are looking for a goalie, is whether you want a small, nimble goalkeeper with high jumping, such as Casillas. That's the first position to really kind of like check off, right? I'm not a big fan of like recommending goalkeepers and saying like, oh, you need to spin for Schmeichel, you need to do this, you need to do that. I think that if you're going to concede a goal, you're going to concede a goal. There's no one that's going to stop me scoring a goal with Romario three or four shots in a row if I get a chance or two at Romario, okay? So we can see us there because he's under 190 CM, we are going to maximize his jumping. So his jumping stat is going to be over 90 or as high as we possibly can get it. And also his reflexes are going to be as high as possible. If you are choosing a taller goalkeeper and you prefer somebody with like bigger shoulders, bigger arms that you don't need jumping stats, but you also want him to be the biggest size physically in goals. Take Donnarumma for instance, right? So where Donnarumma compares to Casillas, he's got 196 in centimeters. He's way taller than Casillas. And these are the decisions you need to make for goalkeepers. He's 11 centimeters taller um, than Casillas. So what we're going to do is we're just simply going to focus on his ability to actually, we don't need to focus on his jump. We're going to focus on just him being an absolute unit inside in goals. So reflexes is the number one. We'll get that to 88 straight off the rip. Parrying and reach. We're not too worried about parrying too much, but because we can get it up that high, we're going to leave it at that. Awareness is also the second one. So because this is the standard Donnarumma, you're going to run into problems straight away that you can't get all the stats up to 90. So you're going to have to pick your poison. So that's where it comes in with uh, parrying and reach. I'm going to go 88 with the reach. We're going to leave the reflexes and we're going to put up the awareness. And then also you can just knock on one. That's going to give us kind of the best version of Donnarumma that we can get. I know his awareness is only 87, but there's nothing really that you can do about that because we do want the reflexes and the reach to be 90. Now you might ask, well, if you're talking about this, the height of Donnarumma, do you need his um, reach to be that high? That's when it comes into it is that the type of goals that you're, you're conceding. So for me, if I know that I'm going to be conceding goals and you want to go to goalkeeper awareness, you have to ask yourself the question, at what cost is it going to be to me with the points that I have left over if I just maximize his reflexes and his goalkeeper awareness, which is what he mostly wants, okay? Am I able to still get him with fairly high, decent reach? And there are the two builds very quickly of that. So that one is definitely going to be probably the one that most people go for with the awareness and the reflexes because he's so big, he doesn't need that extra reach compared to Casillas, who is going to be a little bit... Um, who's going to be a little bit shorter, right? So Casillas has got better reach, better jumping, better awareness, or better reflexes, but he's not going to be as long. So a similar argument can be had all the way up the pitch when we talk about our DMFs. So if you, probably the question I get asked the most is what partnership to have in your DMF and a double pivot or whatever you want to talk about. So if we have these two players here, Makalele and Rijkaard, they're both playing very, very different roles, even though they're both similar type of players in terms of their stats. Makalele is a destroyer. Rijkaard is going to be a DMF. But Rijkaard's main ability is not in his stats. It's in the fact that he's very long and he blocks everything. He's got serious, serious legs on him. He's like Margot Robbie on a night out. Unbelievable legs. And he's going to be so, so, so... I would say, right, that you're going to want the ball to come to Rijkaard rather than chase the ball. And with Makalele, you want to chase the ball and attack the ball and get the ball back. Um, so Makalele is chasing the ball. Rijkaard is letting the ball, you know, come to him. So that anytime it comes in within his vicinity, he's going to just be like a force field and block everything with legs going everywhere, man. It's going to be like a hen night out in Liverpool. Legs going everywhere. So Rijkaard and Makalele here in a double pivot are going to be complementing what each of them do well. And obviously, there's no weakness in these guys' games. Now, if you talk about like standard players and you're saying, yeah, but I don't have Makalele. I want a double pivot, but I don't have Makalele. You take, take somebody like Musa, right? This guy's a box-to-box -box, and he doesn't have that much defensive capabilities. He's more suited to an attacking midfielder. 
So our attacking centre midfielder. So this guy would not really work as well in the double pivot if you're looking to defend with him, if you're looking to have a double role where you have Rijkaard blocking, you have Makalele or whoever you have in this position where Musa is chasing the ball and being a pest. So that is where you come into it with the training guides of players and how you build those players. So for example, Bellingham is a very good example of this. Musa and Bellingham are both box to box, but if you want to train Bellingham, you can train him very effectively as a defensive or an attacking. So straight off the rip, his dribbling type possession, low pass, and speed, and speed is pretty decent, okay? All of these stats here are pretty decent. But if you want to train him as a defensive option, you can actually do that quite well and still have points left over to chase. So all you want to do is pick a position, pick what you want from that player, and then be able to try and train a player that you don't need to rob too much out of his stats to turn him into something that he's not. Why waste, right? Like, as I said, why waste all these stats on Musa if you want to train Musa up? So number one, we're going to have his training guide. We need to train him up. That's fine. So if we train him up, we've got 32 levels to go. But why actually train him in? Because his tackling is only at 60, even though he's a box-to-box, -box, and even though he has track back, and even though you can add blocker to him and you can turn him into a defensive option because his speed and acceleration are quite high, his stamina is really good, um, his defensive capabilities, even if you max everything out and put 20 into it, you're not even going to get close to Bellingham's. And that's with every single stat put into defense. You're not even going to match what Bellingham can achieve in his just by barely tweaking Bellingham's defensive stats. Now, we've popped only, what, 10 into defending? So it's 10, it's half the amount of uh, progression that we've put in. If we want to even go higher with Bellingham, we can, but we don't really need to in that situation. And also on top of that, if you've got 10 Hag, you only always ever need to train up speed stat to 87 because you get the plus three boost with 10 Hag. So straight away, we now have a box-to-box -box, uh, that's a defensive option of Bellingham that can slot him beside Rijkaard. He's not going to be on the god-level tier of Makalele, but at the same time, you still have you know, a free player here. Like It's very, very easy to train these players because the game is practically telling you, okay, we're giving you a Bellingham with a base stat of, let's say, 75 aggression. 78 aggression and 75 tackling. We're also giving you a, a free version of Musa. If you compare the two base versions of them, the game practically holds your hand and tells you how you should train them. So that is one example there if you are using a double pivot. With that, you want one to be able to chase the ball down and actually go and try and get the ball, and the other to be kind of like letting the ball come to him. Okay, that's basically what it is. Rijkaard obviously is going to be a spectacular player there to have, and any of these players that you have here, Makalele, Musa, all of these. Similarly, if you are training a player to be more attacking based, you can do that as well. And you can see here that even though he's a box-to-box, -box, you will be able to train him up very, very, very effectively. So you can go to the 88 acceleration. You can go to the 90 with the speed as well. So that's going to be 90 acceleration, 90 speed. You don't need to worry too much about focus on that or focus on anything, man. It's um, defensively, if you just have a base aggression stat for chasing the ball, but I would not recommend you to use an attacking base player to disrupt the play and try and win the ball back. Do you know what I'm saying? There's no point because why would you play Musa in this role when you can just use Bellingham? That are like, obviously, yeah, player update and stuff will come into it or the live update, but there's always going to be a player that you can use that will not need as much training or not need as much guidance in these positions. And what we will do then is we will have one player that's going to be more kind of attack-based if we've got certain setup back here, especially if you're playing in the lower divisions and you're learning the game you can actually get away with having a deep line on Rijkaard here, and he's basically going to effectively play as another centre-back when you don't have the ball. So you can do that very, very easily. So that's just a quick tip on your midfield partnership if you are choosing to do that. Obviously, Makalele is going to have no weaknesses as a DMF. He's going to be incredible. If you've got any of these good players, man, you're going to be able to genuinely just dominate midfield. It doesn't matter what player you have. And also, don't get too bogged down in different players, right? Rijkaard, Vieira, any tall anchorman or player that you're going to be playing as a DMF, whether it's Casemiro, Fabinho, Rodri, any that are kind of fairly tall and fairly strong and fairly lengthy to be able to win ball back, they're going to all handle the same. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a template for how you train these cards. 85 speed and 90 plus in every defensive stats for players you want to win the ball back with and that are defenders. And then 85 plus in any player that you want to be on the ball with, 
and you want to actually take the ball forward with. So we'll get into that from attacking midfielders on. Now to go to centre backs, right? Centre backs is kind of a, a continuation on of the points that we made, so I don't need to make it too long. Centre backs, you've got a free Otamendi here that came as a nominating contract. Now again, you can you can like use this guide and say, right, any destroyer in your team is essentially what we just described with Makalele. So everything that we said about Makalele, we are going to now apply that to Otamendi or whatever destroyer that we have back here. So the destroyer center back is going to be your aggressive. Think of probably, you know, one of the most, you know, best Premier League partnerships ever, right? Which was John Terry and Carvalho or Vidic and Ferdinand, right? Any, any formation that, or any team that you think about that have an unbelievable center back partnership that won loads with it, right? Sergio Ramos, the time when he was at Real Madrid um, and different players that he would have played with, you know? Center back, you have one that's going to be aggressive, that's a bit of a psycho, that's going to win the ball. That's usually your destroyer. The reason why for that is destroyers always have by default, even slow destroyers that are actually slow in real life will always have speed above 75 or around that if you want to go there. But the number one thing with destroyers that you want is the aggression to be as high as it possibly can, man. High as you possibly can. If you want this to be an aggressive type CB, you want the aggression to be as high as you possibly can. Now, some people will ask as well, well, can you play two destroyer CBs? I want to be aggressive as possible. Yes, you can, but I would always recommend to play a more passive CB beside him. So whether that is somebody like Marquinhos, who was a free uh, reward for logging in for the Brazilian season or the Brazilian uh, rewards, if you want to use uh, somebody beside your destroyer, it's the similar thing, similar point that we mentioned here. If you're talking about using a center back beside your anchorman, similar point we made about right card. One, you want to be very, very passive, not passive in that you can't win the ball back, but you will notice that a lot of the gameplays that you have, if you have a non-destroyer center back, they're usually the last, 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 last line of defense. And also, the defense is very automated with these, with these center backs. So a build up. So you have Van Dijk, you have Marquinhos, you have any of these guys that you're seeing here, where basically the play style of this player, Marquinhos is a build up, is passive. It's not like activated um, to be aggressive. And what you're going to do when you're training these players is as you get up the levels, and obviously if you have Puyol or you have Maldini or you have Aldair, there's going to be no weaknesses in these cards. But even as a free card here, you're going to notice the difference between the destroyer and the, and the, the build-up. And mostly it is got to do with the speed. So with for Marquinhos here, he goes against what he actually plays with. If I was training up uh, Marquinhos, I'm probably going to train him up for a little less speed. But because we're playing him with a passive play style, it's not going to be that important to have his stats, the speed stat as high. You know what I mean? Now, another, a better example is probably going to be Virgil van Dijk. So van Dijk here has 76 speed, but every other defensive stat is going to be into the 90s. So what you're going to do in here with van Dijk is you're saying, OK, he's 100 overall or he's 98 overall. That's fine. But I want him to be non-speed. Look at his acceleration. It's way below what it needs to be compared to even Otamendi's is 61. But if you take in the big destroyers, like I'm talking about the big endgame level destroyers, such as the likes of Aldair, um, who's an absolute rocket man, right? This guy has got 85 speed and every defense stat that you could possibly want past 90. So 95 aggression. Van Dijk's is 90 aggression. That's the big difference in the stats. So think of it like this, right? Up the line here in your two banks of two, for, a bank, for, your, for your four players here and your main central spine, use one aggressive CB, which is a destroyer. Use one more passive non-destroyer CB. Again, this is just my opinion. Some people would be exceptions to the rule where they'll be able to dominate with three center backs playing in a three at the back formation. And they'll have three destroyers because they'll be able to manually defend and manually close off gaps. But for most people, as they make their way up to division three, four, five, or five, four, three, two, one, and they start to learn the game, they start to improve at the game, this is a very good launch pad, is to have like one passive defender that is going to be focused on pure defense, attacking or defensive awareness as high as you possibly can for your non-destroyer CB, and then for this guy here, your center back, that's going to be a destroyer, you want that speed and you want his physicality and aggression to be a bit higher. Now, Aldair is kind of a catch-all, he does everything really, really well. But even if you look at the likes of the free Rudiger that they gave us, uh, if I can find him here real quickly, maybe I'll go, here he is. If you look at the likes of Rudy here, 
Rudy's got 82 speed as a destroyer and 94 aggression. So his best two stats are going to be that. There, and also with the physical contact is going to be good. His defensive awareness isn't as high. His defensive engagement isn't as high. So they're very good players to, combine, to compare there. You look at Van Dyke, your passive main defender. Think of Van Dyke as the one that's controlling the whole system. He's calling the shots at the back. He's the leader from your centre-back position. Rudiger is basically just point over there and cover that gap. Point over there and cover that gap. So Van Dyke is the general at the back. And Rudiger is going and chasing the ball. Same with Rijkaard being the general in midfield and telling Makalele and whoever's in uh, midfield, attacking midfield, to do their job. So that's just very, very simplified. Obviously, there's a couple of nuances to it, but that is a very simplified way of talking about it. And especially you can see with the free cards that Konami do give you, we can't train Rudiger. We can't add anything to him. So what you see is what you get. You will notice that a lot of the destroyer centre-backs are extremely aggressive. Now, there is one other centre-back... Um, obviously we have Bastoni as well there, um, if we wanted to get him in, the free Bastoni, any of this information will apply to any of these cards, so for example, if you have uh, Bastoni, I'm not sure that I go past him, did I go past him? I thought he was like 95 overall, I can't see him boys, um, anyway, it doesn't really matter man, I can't, oh there he is, so Bastoni, right, is going to be an extra front man, that's again another passive centre center back style, um, and you'll see that the speed and acceleration are kind of around that 75 mark. And then Tommy Ashu is going to be your defensive fullback. So a lot of people will say, why not use Tommy Ashu as your defensive fullback? Because he can play anywhere. I think he's better as a CB. Him and Araujo are probably the best two center backs in the game, apart from like the likes of Maldini and anyone that you prefer to use there. But this is another example of players that are not really as aggressive as destroyers. So a destroyer, you want basically to chase the ball, the same as Makalele. And for your passive center backs, whether it's an extra front man, whether it's a defensive fullback that's not going to activate, or whether it's a build-up such as Van Dyke, you are going to want basically them to be the main guys that defend the play. That's basically what it is, man. Basically what you want is your center backs to let the ball, the, the center backs with the highest defensive stats, you want the ball to come to them. So that when the, your opponent is trying to pass through you, that you're going to be the last line in defense after your destroyer center back is beaten, unless you manually defend. Now, very simple, I, I spent a bit long on that, but very simple um, with our right backs and our, and our left backs. I usually, if you're playing this formation, I usually play a right back or a left back that's going to be an attacking outlet. So such as Ferrer, who's a free card, we can train him up to be an attacking outlet here. Even though he's got some nice skills and we can train him very, very decently, most of the time with this guy, we're going to be building our attacks from the right back position if we're training him up this way. So for example, with this guy here, if we are using him as an attacking option, once you get the speed and the acceleration up and also the fact that he can carry the ball a little bit, it's going to be nice. So if you get this player with even 75 type possession, then you can just pop in a few into defending as well, such as the aggression or anything like that. It's really not that big of a deal because all you're going to be doing is running with these players. So if you have a right back and a left back in this formation, you have two options. You can either use a center back, such as Tommy Yashu, or a player that can play center back and right back, such as Araujo, who's probably the best in the game. You can use them in a right back formation here, or else you can bring them in to have an extra CB. The meta has been for months and months and months to have three CB set up. That's basically what it is, right? But if you are using the traditional kind of four at the back, right, you can have one attack in right back or left back, and then you can have one defensive. Now, it depends on what players that you want to use. I've got a lot of good players that I don't really... I don't really have a good defensive left back. Like, you will have different play styles. You will have Reinildo that's there. He's down as a defensive fullback. He's pretty decent. You have Tio Hernandez, who's a fullback finisher. Don't get too bogged down with the attack and finisher and fullback finisher and Carlos being an attack and fullback. But essentially, all you want to do is to have one defensive and one attacking. Whatever side you prefer to attack. If you like to roam up here and get a bit of possession and do a few overlaps and stuff like that, then choose it on the right flank. If you want to do it on the other flank, you can do something like that. And you can get maybe, you know, Carlos in here or whoever that you have that's going to be leading the line. Effectively, what you want to do is you want to have your players that are carrying the ball forward, whether they're wingers, attacking midfielders, or your left or right back. You want them to have speed, acceleration, and you want them to be good on the ball. If you cross a lot, then you want him to be good at crossing. If you touch and go a lot, you want him to have one touch pass. But that is essentially how you set it up there. One defensive, one attacking. And that's kind of a rule of thumb. Now again, 
There's no, like, bona fide, like, this is the ultimate, like, 100% um, golden formation or whatever. That's going to be very dependent on how you actually set up your squad and very dependent on how you play. But that is how I would set up mine. So whoever I'm playing as my passive center back, if I'm playing a destroyer here, right, and I have a passive center back, I'm usually going to leave my passive center back beside my attacking option. So Tia Hernandez, I don't want Bastoni going forward at all. I don't want him running out of position. I just want him to literally chill and be where he is at all times. Rudiger, Wambasaka as a defender with his stats like this, Wambasaka is going to cover because he's so defensive and he's a defensive fullback. He's going to cover any gaps that Rudiger uh, leaves so that I can manually mop up here if I want to. Okay, so that's kind of essentially what you do with the with the full back lines and the center backs. Next up, we are going to move up to up the pitch to set, to attack a midfielders, right? So one of my favorite attacking midfielders at the moment is Son Krasen. I think he's absolutely unbelievable. He's an amazing, amazing card. This is how we've trained him up. He was a free player um, that they gave unbelievable card. But essentially what you want to do is you just want the ball to be able to link to the three of these. Whether you have three center forwards, such as two SS and a center forward, two CFs and a, a, an SS, or you have two wide players, such as a left wing, right wing, and an attacking option, or one SS, a center forward, and a left winger. Um, it doesn't really matter. What you need from your attacking midfielders from where the game plays at the moment, don't worry too much about play style. What I would focus on is if you are running, this is this is a... This is kind of like advice that gets you completely through a lot of a lot of opponents, right? Very simple, very simple, because we don't want to overcomplicate things. If you run with a player, so from this squad that I have built here, I am going to be running with one of the players here from Makalele, Rijkaard, Rudy, Bastoni, and Wambasaka. The only player I'm going to be running with, as in, if I get the ball with Makalele, Rijkaard, Rudiger, Bastoni, or Wambasaka. Nine times out of ten, I'm just going to pass it forward into these areas, right? If I get the ball with Hernandez, I'm going to, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to do a couple of overlaps. I'm going to try and link up with my winger. I'm going to try and cover a few gaps if I get the ball taken off me. And I'm going to try and link up with San Krasen with a couple of splitters. Or I'm going to spread the ball across to my right winger with a good left foot lofted pass or stunning pass. With Wambasaka, Rudy, Bastoni, McLeod and Reichard, I'm not going to worry too much about that. So for any player that you run the ball with, including Son Krasen here, try and have acceleration, balance, and tight possession to be at least 90. Passing, low pass, ball control, dribbling, that can kind of be over, overridden a little bit or overrun a little bit with your play style and how good you are on the sticks. But if you have 90 acceleration, balance, and tight possession, it will hold your hand a lot when you're dribbling. And especially if you're able to get the ball to their feet in good areas, you will be able to do that very effectively. So usually what I would do is, any player that I'm running with, I want them to feel very slick on the ball, very versatile, very mobile, be able to pop in, drop off, run around the shoulder, manually take the ball in, be able to dribble, shoot, pass, everything. So if you've got an attacking midfielder that doesn't have 90 plus in tight possession, balance and acceleration, do me a favor and just try an attacking midfielder that does. Don't worry about his low pass or his finishing. Don't worry about anything else. Just concentrate on that and concentrate on picking positions and getting into spaces that you can attack your opponent. Because what will naturally happen is if you're playing against a really good opponent, right? Even if he's division, it doesn't matter what division they are. It doesn't matter what skill level they are. You will have two options to defend when you're attacking somebody or you're defending to somebody. Usually, somebody will run at you very aggressively. If that's the case, it's all about triangles. Little pass... Touch and go, create gaps, create angles for running on till it happens. Or else people will back off you. If you've got somebody that's backing off you, you can also switch it up with somebody like Bellingham and train your attacking midfielder with a little bit more finishing. So for example, with this Bellingham, if I'm playing him as my attacking option, I'm actually going to raise up his finishing a little bit. And I'm also going to raise up his dribbling, his low pass, everything. So now this Bellingham becomes a player that has a very, very, very like simplified intent purpose. So for example here, if you have this Bellingham build here, finishing is 85, his acceleration is 80, and his balance is 88. You're not hitting those 90-90-90 with tight possession, but you're playing a different style of play. So if you are running gunning, somebody like Son Krasen is a beast. Every dribble stat, every balance, tight possession, acceleration, perfect. If you are being backed off and you're looking to create a little more gap for shooting, then you actually upgrade the passing and the shooting a little bit because it's a slower build-up. 
Now, that's going to be game by game. You always need plan B. I basically would always use a run and gun because it suits my play style. Maradona is kind of a similar position. Any of these guys that you have here with Maradona, you're going to be very, very like easily able to train him up for a run and gun. So you just swap him out if you want to here, right? I need to train him up. But if you wanted to swap Maradona out, it's the same thing, man. It's the same thing. Like, people are going to defend you in one way, unless they're exceptionally good players. I'm talking like top maybe a thousand in the game. They'll switch up their style of how they're training. But for somebody like Maradona, you can actually get his stats ridiculously high very, very easily. You know, your acceleration, your balance, everything else is going to be a bonus. So anything else that you get after this is going to be a bonus. 92 ball control, 92 dribbling, 94 tight possession, 90 acceleration, 93 balance. Everything else is a bonus. So if you want the finishing to be there, you can actually plow into the finishing. If you want the passing to be there, you can plow in the passing. So it all just depends on whether or not you want to have a player that is able to do one job or multiple jobs. I see a lot of people use players and they try like, oh, he's 100 overall, but I can't use him. And it's like, yeah, because you're using Maradona as your main goal scorer which isn't going to work most of the time. That is why I would usually use Maradona in an SS role or else in an AMF role. But that is just kind of a key trick there. Also, when you're talking about skills, right? So for skills, I would always try and have one touch pass. We don't have it on Maradona here, but I would always try and have one touch pass on my attacking midfielders. So for Sankras in here, if we're training him up, we would want one touch pass on him. We have double touch. We have chip shot control, rising shot, long range shooting. I would probably put low lofted on him and one touch pass. That goes without saying. One touch pass is just a key, stat, a key skill for everybody. There's no player that you can put one touch pass on that's going to be, you know, bad, so to speak. Um, so any of these players here that you have it, it doesn't really make a difference. And as you kind of like get better players, a lot of them cards are going to have it just by default. Like, so for example, even if we use Musiala, right, who I absolutely butchered with his build, Luke, uh, Lucas is always given out to me for giving him blocker, but this guy doesn't have one touch pass, right? But he has first time shot. He's more of a kind of a shooting um, attacking midfielder option, but he still has the balance, acceleration and dribbling and all those stats that we could possibly want. But I've actually given him weighted pass and acrobatic clearance and blocker, which I messed up on. So I don't recommend you guys do that. If you ever see me using that Musiala build, it's probably a little bit busted. But for most of the players that are kind of traditional attacking midfielders, such as Rui Costa, who's going to be a creative playmaker. This guy is also not going to have a uh, one-touch pass. So what Konami have started to do now for all of these cards, even with the new cards that we have got recently, a lot of them don't have one-touch pass off the rip. So for example, the older cards would have had it. Um, if you were to play a Pedri attack in midfield, a lot of the older cards have one-touch pass off the rip. So you can see there with Pedri, but for the new cards, such as Honus, who's down as an attack in midfield, um, with his stats there, Honus actually doesn't have one touch pass, even though he's a whole player and he's down as a nearly, you're like what, 100 overall as an attack in midfielder. So one touch pass is very important. And also what I would say as well is that if you are training a card and you don't shoot with the card, don't, don't waste any progression points on shooting, man. I see people the whole time train up a build where they'd auto allocate and they'll be like, oh, you know, this guy is unbelievable. He's absolutely class. And it's like, right, okay. Well, what rating is he? Okay, well, he goes to 101. But you don't score any goals in him because you never shoot. So there's no point having a card with 84 finishing if you're not going to shoot. When you could pop... Now, this is a bad example because he's only five into shooting. But for some cards that do have high finishing but you don't shoot, it's completely wasted. So that is kind of attacking midfielder covered, I would say. Um, and all the backs and the rest of the CMFs and DMFs or whatever. The last one I'm going to cover is going to be outright wingers. Now, these are the most important positions in the game, in my opinion. You need to find a focal point that you're good at and be able to score goals with. So for me, with Mbappe, Mbappe is a goal poacher. We haven't really trained this guy, but this was one of the best free cards that they ever released. 91 speed, 94 acceleration, 91 balance, 90 type possession, and 89 finishing. So with this card here, he's only going to be topped by somebody like the likes of Messi, right? If you've got the likes of Messi, there's no real weakness in his card as a deep line forward. Uh, balance, physical contact, acceleration, dribbling type possession, and finishing. All absolutely perfect, man. Like, it depends on what card that you have. But even that free Mbappe is quite decent. Um, I would also say that the likes of Forlan, any of those that are going to be target men are going to be really good. If you take a look at the new Rummy that released yesterday with this build that we have here, I have trained Rummy with 84 finishing, right? 
This is the build that I have for Rummy that we were testing yesterday. Now, Rummy has six matches played, eight goals and two assists. We've given him no additional skills. He's literally just raw, right? We've given him nothing. It's vanilla ice cream at this moment, man. We've given him no chocolate sauce in it or nothing. It's literally just a run and gun center forward. You might say like, oh, you know, how can you train him with only 84 finishing? Because he's just, you can finish with 84 finishing strikers. If you get a chance, it's mostly one-on-ones. They've nerfed long-range shots. They've nerfed long-range curlers apart from blitz curlers. The game really does reward tap-ins. That's what it rewards, tap-ins and rebounds. So Rummy is at this going to be the tight possession, the balance and the acceleration extremely high. Now you can get his um, finishing up a little bit better than that if you want to. And the best build, the best card that I think is in the game at the moment is probably the Romario card, um, if you wanted to use it, or else Neymar. This free Neymar that they gave, everybody should have. Excellent stats, with 90 finishing, everything is in the 90s apart from tight possession. Balance, speed, acceleration, tacking awareness. The main stat with, uh, with um, your centre forward is, if you're, run, if you're using a run and gun, if he's fast... You don't need to worry as much about attack and awareness because he will still pick up the positions to get ahead of the defenders. He'll be offside the odd time, but the higher the attack and awareness or offensive awareness is, the better it's going to be. That's going to be what you want. So if you've got a slower player, you will notice that their attack and awareness is usually extremely high. So for Drogba, who's a target man or a goal poacher, 99 attack and awareness, but his acceleration and speed are under, you know, 82. So for the likes of Romario or any of those guys, like the ultimate... Um, they're going to have different kind of builds. This is a Ronaldo card with 91 attack and awareness with 90 acceleration, pretty decent. But if you take a look at like slower base players, um, even the likes of Haaland, right? Haaland, who is at a D at this rate, he'll have low acceleration, but 89 attack and awareness. So what you want to do is if you are playing a target man or anyone that's taller than 185, they're going to have a different style of playing for run and gun compared to center forwards that are just lanky and target men and players that are going to be able to knock the ball down for you. So what a lot of the time is, is that if you're using a tall player like this, you kind of have one purpose for him. Forlan is another excellent option here. Forlan is definitely one of the most slept on players, I think, in the game. Acceleration is 90. His attack and awareness is 90. Finishing is 90. The tight possession and balance are perfect at 85. We've scored a lot of goals with Forlan. 35 matches played, 26 goals, and 9 assists. So he's got 35 goals and assists in 35 games, if my math is right. Yeah, it is because I'm a mathematician. But even though if you want to take like a more extreme look at it, right? If you take a look at the likes of Collar. Collar is not going to have high speed or acceleration, but his attacking awareness is going to be insane. So what that means is all players kind of move the same speed when they don't have the ball. So Collar is going to be able to get into brilliant positions without having really high acceleration and speed stats. We don't be dribbling the ball with color. We're going to dribble the ball with our attacking options such as Romario or such as Maradona or any of those that we want to play in those positions. So for example, if you have Romario up there with color, that's going to be a double pivot then that you can use up front or any of those players that you have. Rodrigo is another option who can play either left or right if he's on the wing, but he's kind of better suited as an attacking kind of option to score goals with as well. And, you know, your center forward is always going to be your focal point. So even Stoichkov here, very nice stats, very nice skills, very nice everything. But there is going to be a big difference between using the likes of Baggio and uh, the top class players at the moment. Look at Baggio's card, man. It's absolutely ridiculous. 85 speed, 96 acceleration, 100 balance, 97 ball control, 95 dribbling, 96 tight possession, and 90 finishing. I think Baggio is probably one of the most broken cards in the game at the moment. He's ridiculous. But that is essentially it. And then also for your wide options, if you are using an attack and left back or an attack and right back, I would usually double up on the side. So for this, I would probably do something like this so that I have an overload. I'll leave Rodrigo out here as my attack and out wide option because Wambasak is going to be defensive. And for Hernandez, who's going to be getting up this area here, I'm going to probably have an SS that can shoot. So Maradona is obviously a left footer. I want a right footer that's able to shoot. So for example, if we use Blitz Curler Sun or Salah, it's going to depend on what, what way we have him. So for me, if I use Sun here, we can use him as an SS that he's basically going to be shooting as well as a second option. So that is really what you need to consider. If you are using a center forward, I would always recommend if you're using a double, a double uh, center forward, right? And you're actually going to go back here a little bit and change your formation a little bit, or you're going to go like this you can actually use two players up front like this where you have one big, one small. And then your two AMFs are going to slot into this position. So all that you're doing here 
is that your complement in what collar doesn't do too well, which is run the ball, and your complement in what uh, Son doesn't do well with collar, which is to knock the ball down from long range shots, knock ons from corners, and just frustrate your opponent. You know, that's what you're going to be trying to do. So acrobatic finishing is a big one on this, heading on your attackers that are looking to get in the air, aerial superiority, and then as many shooting skills as you can possibly hand, have. This son is a fantastic player as well, uh, but he has the blitz curler. So any of these players that you have here, any of these players that I have here can, can, do, can do you wonders. Even the likes of Eric Cantona. Cantona has got deceptively quick acceleration, even though his attacking awareness isn't that high. Because the stat stacks, as you see here with Drogba, Drogba is a really good example. Drogba's actually got 81 acceleration, but only 70 balance and 77 type possession. So don't run with Drogba, you're knocking it on. 100 head and 100 physical contact and 99 attack and awareness. The game is practically telling you how to play him. Whereas with Son, he's got the ball control, dribbling, type possession, balance, speed, stamina, acceleration and kicking power and finishing all 85 plus or 84 plus. So yeah, that is it boys. That is it for the video. Everything is kind of covered there. Skills, I think, you know, we'll cover that as much as we can. The skills, in my opinion, I don't think they're as important if you've got the right players in the right positions and you know what you're trying to do. So that is kind of my opinion on all of that um, to be double dipping. I don't really rate having two, like three CFs unless you're playing super meta like this. If you want to have three CFs or you want to have two CFs and a winger up here, I do recommend doing that if you are looking to get more wins. You've got your double pivot. You've got your protection at the back. You've got one defensive that can slot in here uh, when Rudiger leaves a gap. And you've got your outlet to be able to bombard up there or to be able to swing the ball across up to your forwards. So, yeah, that is it. And obviously, as well, it goes without saying, I'm going to be doing this here, but the free reset is on until the 7th, which is tomorrow. This video will be going up live. It was part of the live stream. It's going to cost you this much until then. Free until now, uh, from now until then. But yeah, make sure you do reset your players if you want to retrain them or just leave them there and then retrain them later. But um, yeah, that is it, man. That is it.